Thank you and welcome to the CMC Markets week, Monday weekly webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst at CMC Markets. Uh, the time is 12.15 on Monday the 31st of July. I'm just going to leave the risk warning to sit here on the screen in front of you. You've read it before I'm sure and if you, especially if you are a regular uh, viewer or, and listener to our webinars, it's nothing you haven't seen before but compliance prefer that we run through the risk warning screen before we actually proceed with the webinar itself. So I'll just leave this on screen here for a number of seconds before we kick off the actual webinar. So thank you very much uh, for paying it for, 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 um, for reading through the risk warning. Let's actually kick off the webinar itself properly now. Uh, as usual, the kind of rundown we'll go through is similar to what we, what we normally do. We'll have a quick discussion, a quick chat about what's happened over the weekend. Uh, and then more importantly, we'll have a look at what is due out for the week ahead. Uh, and then after that, we'll spend the bulk of the webinar looking at the most popular markets and what, what, also, what price movements could we see for the next few trading days. Um, so that what, 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 taking a look over the weekend, what we saw uh, out of China was we had some better than ex we had some well, we had some manufacturing numbers out of China, which came in slightly below expectations and showed that in July the manufacturing sector in China grew but grew at a slower rate. Uh, what that means is that the, the markets are interpreting this as it's not amazing news that it came in slightly below expectations and it's not fantastic news that it showed it showed that there's a slower growth rate, but nonetheless. Uh, we have seen a push higher in the price of high-grade copper, and on the back of that, we've also seen a positive move in mining companies. So the likes of your Rio Tinto, Antofagasta, the, Chile, the Chilean mining, copper mining company, basically built in Rio Tinto, Anglo-American, have all done quite well out of that. Also, over the uh, in, this morning, what we witnessed, uh, HSBC had some good first-half numbers, uh, major British bank with a very much a far eastern focus. Uh, HSBC posted but better than it, posted a rise in first half profits, which came in ahead of analysts' expectations. Uh, on top of that, uh, their common equity tier one ratio rose uh, for the, in the last 12 months compared to the first half of 2016, which basically tells us that the bank's liquidity is in a better shape now than it was back then. Granted, it was in a fairly good shape back then, it's just even in a, in a better shape now. And to prove just how, how much of a, of a strong financial position HSBC are in, they've actually managed to go off and announce a $2 billion share buyback scheme, which they hope, hope to complete uh, by the end of this year. Keeping in mind, this is July, it was only back in February that HSBC embarked on a $1 billion HSB, uh, share buyback scheme. So it goes to show you how confident they are that they've managed to improve their liquidity ratio, which essentially is a test should we see a major downturn in the economy, uh, unemployment rises, bad loans take up, asset fall in value, how would a major bank hold up under that uh, hypothetical scenario? And HSBC are, are in such a strong position, not only have they increased, have improved their liquidity position, they've managed to actually go ahead and actually increase a, bring in a share buyback scheme only a few months after announcing another one. Also this morning, we saw some uh, data out of the, of the UK, Broadly speaking, it was mixed in terms of the mortgage, number of mortgages, the amount of mortgages that were pumped out, the money supply, and also the actual credit lines to UK consumer confidence to, 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 the UK, to the UK public. By and large, it was mixed. Mortgages, the number of individual mortgages came in um, slightly below expectations, but if you actually take a look at the, actual, the amount that was actually, that was actually uh, put out uh, in, in the time period, it actually it did actually increase. Looking a look, taking a look at Eurozone uh, data, the CPI numbers, um, both the CPI and also the core CPI and the unemployment numbers. If you're wondering where you can find economic indicators on our platform, go to Market Pulse, fourth option down, Market Calendar. And I'll give you a rundown of the, the major uh, economic indicators and what, what, what they came in at versus what the previous month was and also what, versus what they were expected. So turning our attention here to the consumer the CPI numbers from the Eurozone, it came in at 1.3%, the headline number. 
in line with expectations unchanged on the month. Looking at the unemployment, unemployment dropped from 9.3% to 9.1%, and bearing in mind, we did also see we were expecting a, a decline to only 92 So that came in better than expected on that front. Turning our attention now to what can we expect for the rest of the trading week. So on our website, under the news and analysis section, you can see here we get a breakdown. You can turn our attention to the weekly earnings calendar, start with week commencing the 31st of July 2017. So what, the, what are the big things to watch out for in the week ahead of us? Well, tomorrow we have the third quarter earnings from Apple. We have also have the uh, first half update from BP. We have, a, we have a Reserve Bank of Australia have a rate meeting. To be honest, we're not really expecting any change in their policy. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England rate decision. Um, no change is to be expected, but bearing in mind, at the last meeting, three of the Bank of England members voted to raise in, to raise interest rates. That be, adding on top of that, Kirsty Forbes, one of, one of one of those hawks, has now departed. So we could see that falling back to only two of the of the of the members uh, voting for a raise in interest rates. On Friday, we have a update from Royal Bank of Scotland, and also on Friday, being the first Friday of the month, we will also have the U.S. data of the jobs data, the non-farm payrolls. So let's have a look at how the markets have been forming, major markets have been performing uh, throughout the morning session. So starting off with the FTSE 100, bearing in mind we did have quite a poor uh, finish to uh, last week on the on the FTSE 100. So you can see now we have pushed higher in, in early morning trading, but we have managed to give up some of those gains yet again. So as you can see here, after hitting a record high uh, in June for basically the last eight weeks, two months, pretty much non-stop, the FTSE has been broadly been pushing lower. Now taking a look here, we can see that we're off the lows of last week, but at the same time we haven't have managed to kind of have managed to kind of push back up north of the 50-day moving average at 7,450. If you can look here, that you can, it's quite clear that the momentum and this upward move here. Has actually been waning, and we've actually not going kind to of swung to negative territory in terms of momentum. So the next level to watch out for for the FTSE is going to be to the downside. The support at 7,295, which corresponds with the lows from late June, are going to be the levels levels to watch out for uh, to the downside for the FTSE 100. And should we move south of that, we we'll then be looking towards 7,200 itself. Any rallies in the FTSE 100 uh, are going to be encountered. In around the, this this price action here of 7,439 up to the 50-day moving average 7,450. This area here is going to act as resistance to any rallies. I should be but should be pushed north of that. The next level to watch out for is going to be the resistance from this level here in July, uh, the 21st of July at 7,515. It's a bit of a worse state over in Germany. We're turning our attention now to what's been going on in the DAX. Compar broadly speaking, Euros Europe, US equity markets are in better shape than, the, than European markets. And drilling down further to that, and again, the UK markets is in better shape than the continental European markets. The Eurozone markets are definitely in, in a worse shape, and, and especially the, the chart is a bit more worrying than what we're seeing here in the UK. Similar enough situation to the UK, the, the, the Germany 30, the DAX went on to create a record high in June, but has been pushing lower since then, creating a lower low, a lower high, and then we're pushing down to a new lower low. We seem to be kind of running out of steam to the downside here, but the next level to watch out for on the DAX is going to be the support at 12,095, and then a move below that will then bring the support at 11,941 on the cards, and then should we move south of that again, traders are looking towards the 200 day moving average at 11,851. Notice as the market is falling off here, we are seeing an increase in negative momentum. And negative momentum is still very much in the red at the moment. But should we see any pushes higher in the Germany 30, we could look to, we could we could see fresh bout of buy, a fresh bout of selling, and areas to be keep an eye on for this potential resistance level. Is this, this low here from early July at 12,343 and then again also at the 100 day moving average at 12,435 and then you can see the 50 day moving average sits in around 12,500. So these are all levels to watch out for should we see a bounce back in the DAX bearing in mind the trend for the last number of weeks, the last say, couple of months 
has been to the downside. Over in the United States, equity markets are looking in a, in a far better shape there. Record close for the Dow on, on Friday. It just seems to be kind of record after record for what's been going on in the United States. Uh, looking at the, at the Dow here, as you can see here, uh, it's been in a very clear upward trend for the last number of months for the Dow Jones. Any kind of pullbacks could find support in around the 12, sorry, 21,800 region and also 21,700 region. We can see that momentum is in, is, is in, is in a positive way. Momentum, positive momentum is increasing, so it can give us confirmation. Uh, we can be more confident in the, the upward move is going to continue. Should we see any declines in the index, or should we see any declines in the actual momentum itself, that's when you've got to get slightly worried. But for the time being, it appears that the, we've seen a very popular strategy of buying the dips on the US 30 on the Dow Jones has been very common, very popular with some traders. Similar situation, but not as rosy for the S&P 500. It's been going on to, last week we saw a series of record highs being created. That's the, uh, it's the same chart yet again, unfortunately. Let's grab the S&P now. Here we have it now. Broadly speaking, the S&P is in quite a good shape. We, we went on to create record highs last week, but we did see a slight tailing off in, in the price of the S&P 500 towards the back end of the week. What's also slightly worrying though, is how we're seeing a decline in positive momentum. And this is when we're seeing prices hitting record highs, but while the market is, the momentum is declining, it could be an early indication that we could see a decent sized, reasonable sized pullback. When, price, when prices are continuing to push higher, but momentum is going lower, that's, that's, that's what's called a divergence. And it's almost like if a runner is continuing on uh, running a 10 kilometer race and they're they're continuing to ratchet up a increase in their distance from kilometer four to five to six to seven but the rate at which they're running at is actually slowing down so it's like we're seeing that in, in the s p 500 the market has gone on to, to print all-time highs new all-time highs but yet the rate at which is doing that is slowing down so this could be an early indication that we could see uh, a, a reasonable sized pullback in the s p 500 Bearing in mind the big picture is very is, is very clearly pointing towards a solid upward trend. So I would this this would necessarily negate the big picture upward trend that we've seen. It just means we could see a recent a decent sized pullback. And areas to be watching out for to the downside for the S and P 500 well, would be 2,460, 2,450, and 2,440. Bearing in mind. If we do see this momentum turn negative, we could be looking heading more down towards the 50 day moving average at 2,440 for the S&P. The NASDAQ is in a pretty good shape. Not too, only last week it was going on and printing record. The NASDAQ 100 was printing record highs. Not too uncommon. Uh, very kind of in line with what's been going on in the United States. Similarish looking chart in, in respect to, we can see a going, the market's going on to print new all time highs. Yeah, worrying, slightly worryingly, we are seeing a decline in, in positive momentum. So it could be an indication that this bull run is sort of running out of steam. It's kind of on its last legs. Not to say the market is going to completely turn over and have a massive crash. Just that we could see uh, a reasonable size pullback. But the kind of bigger picture, the long term view is still very much to the upside. So the bigger picture is that bulls will be looking towards kind of 6,000 level. But should we see pullbacks? We could see them in this 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 price would be the first one to watch here at 5,848 and then 5,800 itself and then we're looking towards 5,700 should we see a reasonably a reasonably large pullback in the Nasdaq 100. Turning attention now to what, what's been going on in the gold market. Gold had a decent finish on Friday given what was what has gone on. Uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. growth figures, the, the figure the growth figures for the United States in the second half came in at 2.6%, bang in line with market expectations. But in the first half, in the first quarter of the year, the growth was originally uh, declared to be at 1.4%, but that was then revised low to 1.2%. When traders saw that, they took the took their cues that we're we're less likely to see a rate rise from the Federal Reserve. 
uh, in 2017, another one from, from the Federal Reserve in 2017. Going into the meeting, traders were already were, were very much just uh, uh, undecided whether we're going to see another rate hike from the Federal Reserve this year. On the back of that, uh, they're becoming more even indecisive, and 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 uh, there's actually there's actually now there's actually now kind of a, a large quite a large debate: Are we going to see a, another rate rise? from the Fed this year. A lot of traders out there in the market don't think we are, and that's been reflected in the upward move in the price of gold. So as you can see here, gold has been in a fairly consistent and steady upward trend uh, for the last about three weeks. It's run into the, the, through this uh, trend line here, which if you, if you connect the, uh, the low from December with the, with the lows of May, we can see here that it was um, that it, it, the trend line was broken, and I was gonna run back up into that region here. So. Should we kind of continue to move north of that, uh, the next move, the next level to watch out for in gold is going to be 1280. And then we're looking towards the June high, which is also the 2017 high of 1296. Any moves lower in the price of gold, we could be looking to get support in around the 50 day moving average, which comes into play with around the same price as the 100 day moving average at 1250. And then get below that, we'd be looking to we look towards this price here at 1243 for gold. Notice how as the price of gold is pushing higher, we can see a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. It hasn't, it hasn't really made additional gains on the gains it made from the, the 21st of July 10 days ago. But notice how while the price is moving higher, momentum is also kind of ever so slightly creeping higher as well. Uh, the gold market covered. Uh, now we're keeping with the commodities team. We, we will now have a look over what's going on in the oil market. Bearing in mind, on Friday, the Baker Hughes rig count report showed the number of active rigs in the United States increased by two to 766 rigs. Granted, in percentage terms, it's a very, very small increase in, 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 in rig counts, but it's just something to be to be mindful of. Rigs uh, and, and, and rig counted in the in the, in the United from the Baker Hughes report. Uh, three reports of the last in the last month. Four out of a top four of a total of four show that rig counts has been rising in the United States. Given what what has gone on uh, in, in the price in, in relation to OPEC and Saudi Arabia's pledge to curb their their oil exports, Nigeria has come into the fold and and has stated that they would actually voluntar voluntarily comply with the coordinated uh, production cut that OPEC has, uh, also alongside some uh, non OPEC members. On top of that. And there's been a wider call uh, within the OPEC countries, OPEC members, to actually comply with the coordinated production cut because once it, after it was announced in late May, there wasn't a whole lot of of, uh, um, of, of countries and member states complying with it throughout June. We saw a major sell-off uh, in in June, but then we see a bounce back, and now we see a continuation of the market pushing higher. So we keep, if we're looking at price action on uh, on Brent here. We can see here the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be the $53 barrel, $53 per barrel mark. And north of that, we'll be looking towards the high from May, which comes in this price here at $54.55 roughly. And then north of that again, traders are then going to be looking towards the April high of $56.55. Notice how, as you can see here, we've seen that the price of oil push higher. It's managed to take off various oil supports. Currently now acting resistance moved north of the 50-day moving average. The 100-day moving average is providing support here at $50.47, and then it's taken it's moved north on Friday of the 30-day moving average, which is obviously quite a, quite a bullish indicator in itself. Any any pushes lower in oil, any uh, any uh, moves lower, we could see support coming into play at the fifth at the 30-day moving average at 21. Sorry, 51.62, and then below that at the 100-day moving average at $50.49. As we can see here, the last few sessions have shown an increase in price and also an increase in momentum. So you can be more confident of that that the kind of momentum is with the bulls. Turning our attention now, we're going to see a very similar-looking chart for WTI, uh, given that the two largely move in step with each other. Similar situation here. Last Friday, WTI, the price of West Texas Intermediate crude, went north of the 2 day moving average, and now we're still holding above that level. So any pullbacks in WTI could find support at the 2 day moving average at $49.44. 40, 
below that we could see here that the one day moving average provided support uh, last Wednesday uh, at forty seven dollars and seventy four cents and then of course if you see quite a large tracement we could see support come into play at forty six dollars and thirty four cents at the fifty day moving average to the upside we're seeing as the momentum is clearly to the upside for for for, uh, for WTI fifty dollars is going to be the big kind of psychological number to watch out for and then we'll be looking towards bulls we'll be looking then towards the May high of fifty one dollars and sixty six cents. Then of course fifty two dollars per barrel, and then north of that again, bulls will be looking towards fifty three dollars and fifty six cents. Turning our attention now to to the major currency pairs, the euro versus the U.S. dollar has been in a very solid upward trend uh, for the last uh, throughout all, all the way throughout twenty seventeen. Uh, we are we are getting very very close to August. August kicks off tomorrow. And bearing in mind at the Jackson Hole Symposium, Mario Draghi is due to, to, to deliver a speech in, which is in late August. And it's widely speculated that Mario Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank, is going to talk, at very least lay the groundwork or talk about uh, the European Central Bank potentially maybe reducing the size of their bond buying scheme, which currently lasts, which is currently at 60 billion euros per month. The, the speculation that Mario Draghi is going to lay the groundwork that to be reduced not to say that he'll actually call an announcement and a reduction immediately just he could potentially prep traders in advance the ecb are altering their language or the ecb are, are contemplating changes to their monetary policy or their bond buying scheme this is the sort of language we need to look out for but the euro versus the, the us dollar has been in a very clear and, and consistent upward trend throughout 2017 buying the pullbacks uh, as, as, as has been the, a very popular strategy with traders on this particular currency pair for the last number of months. The 118 level is to, to the upside is going to be the next big level to watch out for, seeing as it coincides with the 200 day moving average here. Should be moved north of the 200 day moving average and beyond that, the next big psychological number to watch out for is then going to be the, the 120 uh, mark on the euro versus the US dollar. And any pullbacks we see. In this currency pair, we could be looking for support at the in at the 117 region, and then also below that at 116.16, and then south of that again in the 114.79 area. Taking a look now at the pound versus the US dollar, bearing in mind it's going to be a big week for for the pound versus the US dollar this week, seeing as as, as we have an update from the Bank of England on Thursday and we have the non-farm payroll figures on Friday, amongst other economic data. But those are by far, if you're trading this currency pair, you do need to be uh, very much aware of what is, what is uh, of, the, of those two big economic events. We're we're, we're uh, comfortably above the kind of 131 level at the moment. Traders are looking towards the uh, the resistance. The, uh, at 131.59 and then north of that we'd be looking towards 132 any pullbacks in the pound versus the greenback could find support in around the 131 region and then 130.47 and then below that again in the 129.77 129 region itself it hasn't been in as a as a as a solid a consistent um a solid and consistent upper trend as the euro versus the US dollar but what I can say is that it has been broadly been pushing higher throughout 2017 pound has been gaining ground versus the dollar throughout 2017 uh, looking at now euro sterling Because of all this speculation that the European Central Bank is going to look to at least talk about potentially tapering the size of their monthly bond buying scheme, the euro has performed quite well. And of course, this is the two feed each other, feed into each other. We have some, we have some, we've seen a decent recovery in the in the eurozone, which has brought about this increased speculation of the of the European Central Bank uh, potentially reducing the size of the bond buying schemes all the way throughout 2017. Particularly from April onwards, we've seen decent economic indicators out, out of the eurozone, and it's reflected here in the actual upward move in the currency pair. So, a similar situation, we'd be looking towards 90 cents to the upside for the euro versus the versus the British pound. Any pullbacks, we'd be looking for support in this this price action here, just shy of 89 at 88.91. 
and then we'll also be looking south of that again at 88 88 sorry yes 88 80 with the next support level below that again and then we'll be looking towards 88 32 for the euro versus the british pound north north of 90 cents we'll be then looking towards the october 2016 high of of, of 90 basically 1950 will be the next level to watch out for beyond 90 cents sorry 90 uh, 90 pence for the euro versus the british pound having a look now at the us dollar versus the japanese yen for the last basically throughout, throughout july it's been a fairly clear and consistent kind of downward trend and as you can see the price kind of grinding lower here because the perception is the united states isn't going to raise rates again in 2017. that's that's what a, a large portion of traders believe given uh, especially in light of the lower of the revised gdp numbers for the first quarter of of uh, 2017. so we're pushing lower in the uh, in the dollar versus the japanese yen we can see that the momentum is clearly in a, in a negative side there's no indication that that's going to be swinging positive anytime soon we're currently at 110.55 on the dollar yen so the support here at 110.30 is going to be the next level to watch out for to the downside and then below that we'll be looking towards 109 and 108 region here should we see in any kind of pullbacks in the uh, the dollar versus the japanese yen we could be looking for resistance in around this this price action here where they put the 50 day moving average and the 100 day moving average sort of coincide with each other which is in the kind of 111 50 region and then it should be moved north of that here we could also see uh, the the 200 day moving average acting as, as a as a stumbling block to any to any moves higher and the one uh, the 200 day moving average is at 112.18 as I mentioned, we have a, a, an update from the Reserve Bank of Australia during the week uh, tomorrow. We're expecting on interest rates to remain unchanged, but given that we've seen some positive economic indicators out of the out of the Australia, and also co at the same time we've also seen some not so hot e economic indicators from the United States. We have seen the we have seen the uh, a tremendous push higher in the Aussie dollar. As we can see here, look at, looking at the weekly chart, we can see here on, on Friday, it managed actually to trade north of the 200-week 200, 200 moving average, which is obviously something, something is obviously in itself is quite a, 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 quite a bullish indicator. We're, we're, not, we're currently back low, below that level at the moment, but the trend on the Australian dollar versus the US dollar basically was all, all the way throughout 2017 and, and even beyond that has actually been very much to the upside it's once we kind of turn the corner from december 2016 onwards it's been a very kind of clear and concise up, upward trend also what I, what I will point out though is that we are seeing a decline in momentum and it, it is a bit concerning that when you, when you see uh markets go on to hit multi-month highs and multi-year highs but at the same time momentum is dwindling it could be a sign that the the, the bulls and the buyers are running running out of steam a bit uh and what we could see is we could see a bit of a pullback towards the kind of the 79 region or the, the, we, could, we could see some support come into play at 78 to 78 itself or then down towards this price action here of between 78 34 and 77 86 so just be mindful uh of, uh, of not only be, be fully aware of that where we've kind of ran into resistance at the 200 week moving average on the Aussie dollar, but also that momentum is declining. So that we could see a bit of a, a we could see some of the, the buyers and the bulls taking a bit, a bit of a breather, and we could see the currency pair hand back some of the some of the uh, some of the ground that it has made. But by but seeing as that we're at multi month highs and, and uh, you know multi year highs, we are the big picture is to the upside for the Aussie dollar. So traders who who, who are who are buyers of this currency pair. Will first and foremost be looking towards 8065 to the upside, um, and then beyond that, we'll be looking towards 81 and then 82 on terms of the actual levels to watch out for. The dollar CAD, the other, other big currency commodity, has, uh, has been in play recently, given the given what's been going on in, in regarding the perception that the United States isn't going to raise rates, interest rates again uh, in 2017. It's in a very much uh, bearish move here for the last number of weeks and, and months. Also, you can see here that negative momentum is very much increasing. So the outlook 
still remains to be very negative for the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. This is not now looking at it on a daily chart. So we can see that the market is grinding lower uh, and we can see a bit of price. We, we can see we can see here that there's quite a large positive candle here um, and we can see the, the market is kind of looking to kind of turn itself around. On top of that, negative momentum is slowly but surely decreasing. So the rate at which the market is pushing lower is coming to a, is declining. So this could be a sign of that we could like to see a bit of a turnaround in this currency pair. And should we see a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a bounce back in this currency pair, the initial level to the upside that we'd be looking out for would be 125.76. And then we'd be looking towards the 127 region in around here, 126.88 at 127 itself. And then traders will then be looking towards this price, this price here, the uh, the, the low from the 7th of February at 128.59. But the big picture is still very much to the downside for the US dollar, Canadian dollar. Uh, just after clocking here, the time it is just gone. Uh, it is just gone 12:46. Uh, so, if you have any markets you'd like me to cover that I haven't mentioned, please, please feel free uh, to shout them out. I just also want to take this opportunity to kind of point out on our on our trading platform whereabouts you can find our updates. Um, you can see here that on the chart forum, which if you go in from Market Pulse and click on the third option down, Market Forum. Myself and other analysts will will, uh, will post our updates in terms of um, what we think what we think are look to, appear to be interesting charts. This is all going to be here on the chart forum. This is going to be this is, this is updated uh, every, several times a day, every single day. Here on the right hand side is our market insights. So some of our news analysis gets put on the insights section. Uh, as you can see here, we got we, we, uh, some. This, this is the best place to look out for updates in terms of economic indicators. So as soon as the economic indicators come out here at 10 o'clock, the Eurozone numbers, they were then put up on our website on the on this at at um, at six minutes past 10. So it just goes to show you how fast we are at actually posting numbers uh, in terms of uh, economic indicators. Not all some of our some of our some of our our news updates get posted on Insight. All those ones get shared on the news and analysis section in here. Some are actually on both. Uh, so you will see a crossover between the two. Also, uh, seeing as you've managed to sign up for this webinar, uh, bearing in mind, uh, as I mentioned, it is not the first Friday of the month is coming up, which means it is non-farm payrolls. So in terms of what, what, we, what we can look, look ahead to, other webinars um, coming up on Friday the 4th of August, this Friday coming, we will be hosting our non-farm payrolls, pay, payrolls webinar. It kicking, kicks off at uh, quarter past one BST, British summer time, quarter past one London time. The number itself obviously come out at half past the hour. So please feel free to sign up for that. Um, seeing as we've had no, we've, we've had no comments uh, in relation to um, up any markets that you'd like me to look at, I'm now going to end the webinar here. And I, I would uh, like to thank you for myself and from all of us here at CMC Markets. Uh, have a good trading week and best of luck.